Hey guys, bright sunny morning, about to jog, familiar route, same as last time, up around the thing, all the way around to the lookout, and last time I did this for time, I just about made it mad, I wanted to get it under 10 minutes, I had 10 minutes and 6 tenths of a second was my time last time, so I did it for time, done it since then, but that was just like a slow Sunday, or not Sunday, but Saturday jog, and I did like two loops, just slowly. So, <coughs> I gotta talk about uh, my fitness routine. Chris 580, not to be confused with Chris 469, asked me to go through my routine. So, we're gonna do that. First off, I'm not really qualified to tell you guys what to do. <laughs> so anything I say in this video is just going to be me talking about what I'm doing and anyone who's thinking about doing anything should really talk to uh, some sort of health or fitness professional. I'm not qualified to tell anybody what to do. Um, that's why in this video I'm going to recommend some people who do know more than me, who I learned a lot from. <clears throat> And I drank coffee this morning, man, so I'm going to be coughing. It gets my reflux fired up, man. I got this French press, and I make this really strong espresso a lot of mornings. I don't drink it every single day, but I drink it a lot of days. And, man, I love it. It tastes good, but get the reflux, man. It ain't too bad if I'm just sitting there, but if I get out and jog and shake it up, I'm going to leave that French press behind. I thought about trying to take it to India, but it just doesn't make sense. So, uh, I just used the last of my bag of espresso, so I don't think I'm going to buy any more. I think I'm going to try going without it. I only got, like, uh, today's Monday, so it's one day less than two weeks left. I'm just going to try going without it and see when I jog if my reflux goes away. I'm sure it will because it doesn't happen every day. I think it's just the coffee. We're approaching the turn here. So let's talk about this. First, let's talk about my fitness goals and why I do what I do and how I arrived at what I do. So the way I arrived here was my main goal, <clears throat> first of all, is uh, to improve posture. I got a ways to go yet. Um, so, really that comes down to strengthening your core. There's some weak muscles in my back and my core. Things are out of whack. So, to address that, based on my research, the best thing for me to do is to improve my core strength and get everything strong, not just like a lot of people focus on certain exercises. Certain exercises are popular because uh, they make your mirror muscles big or whatever. And uh, those don't really address your core strength. So, here we go. We're getting close. I got to get my timer ready. And we're on. I'm not really gonna try to hustle too much today. I mean, it'd be awesome to get close to 10 minutes, but it's gonna be hard for me to talk if I do. I really have to go fast to do that. So, someone who I've watched forever, we'll just start with, uh, actually no, let's start with the guy who, when I was getting into this posture stuff, I learned from a friend of mine who's really into fitness stuff and he, uh, Man, he's just got like a whole library of health and fitness books. And uh, I learned from him about this program called Foundation Training. Foundation Training, in my mind, is pretty much where it's at, man. For my goals, for improving posture, it's just awesome. There's this guy, Eric Goodman, is the guy who made it. And Goodman, he had a uh, 
He used to be like a competitive uh, bodybuilder when he was very young. Still a pretty big guy, especially considering he doesn't lift weights. I mean, you see this guy, he's built like a brick shit house, and all he does, he says he's still into like, a, well, not still into, but he's into a stand up paddleboard and he jogs hiking trails. Those are his main activities, and then he just does foundation training and he says he does not lift weights, he does like basically just does pull ups and foundation training, and that's it. And uh, then he just does his activities of stand up paddleboard and uh, trail running. <clears throat> and what happened with him, he was a competitive bodybuilder, he had a back injury, bad back injury that caused him chronic pain for a long time and he went to all these specialists and they couldn't fix it and he wound up having to figure it out on his own I think they I don't know if he ever did this surgery they wanted to do but anyway he basically developed foundation training as his own uh, <coughs> as his own solution to the problem and I love it. I've experienced such health gains from doing this. It's really awesome. Check this guy. Hello. Hello. Hi. So, uh, yeah, he developed this system, and I think it's great. Uh, I've done it off and off. I did it really religiously for like two weeks for using, uh, well, doing the whole routine he has, at least like to start out or beginner routine. And, oh my gosh. I, it is just awesome. I fell back off of it a while. And then I've started incorporating just bits and pieces of it. I haven't been doing it that much lately, but I've been doing some of it as like a warm up. That's the cool thing with it. It can be integrated into anything. So whatever sport you're into, whatever, uh, whatever type of thing, there's certain uh, sports specific elements of it that you can add as like a warm up or to strengthen certain uh, certain areas so now another thing that's really similar to this that I have less experience with and let's talk about the cost of this and what you guys spend to learn about it and all that so foundation training there's a first book um, I think it's just called foundation training and it has a forward by Lance Armstrong, who I still think is a badass. I think he got a bad rap. I'm not saying he wasn't doping, but I'm saying everybody was. And for him to be singled out is just, after what he did for that sport of cycling, it's a disgrace, man. The way they railed it, railroaded him out of his own organization, just a bunch of bullshit. Anyway, that said, I think because Lance wrote the foreword for that they've kind of buried that book a bit and he's got a new book called uh oh gosh <laughs> movement something movement just look up Eric Goodman DC and you'll see it uh movement by design or something like that I have the new book too but it's really like I don't know Honestly, I recommend the first book. The new one's got some great info. There are good things about it for sure that weren't included in the first book. But I would say the first book's kind of... Uh, I found the first book to be more comprehensive. The second book to me seems like... A, no offense, ladies, but it's more for the chicks. Um, <laughs> it's more like I don't know it's not 
think you guys can maybe understand what I mean by that. It's just more like a, if you compare like a book, a really comprehensive book about how to do yoga to like some kind of uh, Mademoiselle or Elle magazine uh, condensation or condensed version of how to do yoga. That's how this book feels to me compared to the first book. Uh, now that said, there are some moves in the new book that aren't in the first one. And he really gets into the breathing thing in the new book, which is great. Um, I don't know, there's a soft spot in my heart for the first book. Anyway, that's Eric Goodman now. That first book that's kind of buried because of Armstrong. Um, you could probably find that book for 20 bucks or less, especially some used copy on eBay or wherever eight books. Um, the second book's probably a little more expensive. Now, there are a few videos online, more than a few. Uh, I'll just cover the very basic moves, but if you look up Foundation Training or Eric Goodman, on YouTube, you'll see some of the moves. They have launched a website. It's a member website where I think for, I can't even remember, maybe 20 bucks a month or 10 bucks a month, I don't even know. You can go access <coughs> their library of videos. For a while they did have a thing where you could just pay $200. I think it was when they were trying to get it launched and basically probably raising money to pay for the uh, implementation of all this. You could pay 200 and just get like lifetime access to all the content. I should have done that. Anyway, I don't even know if that's still available, but you can at least have a monthly membership or just get the books or whatever. And then of course, he does go around certifying people in this. And uh, he uh, has a network of people who can coach you one-on-one. <coughs> -on -one. There's one in Cambodia I was thinking about trying to visit. So that's Eric Goodman and Foundation Training. Now, <coughs> virtually the same thing. And nearly identical story of how it was developed. Does anyone remember? <laughs> Diamond Dallas Page. Diamond Dallas Page Yoga, DDPY, is essentially the same thing. So, Diamond Dallas Page, of course, Pro wrestler, he uh, <coughs> his back was all torn up. I mean, really bad, like the disc in between his vertebrae were disintegrated and stuff. And uh, he basically had to do the same thing as Goodman, like back in a time when uh, nobody talked about this. I just talked about surgery and all this. He uh. He figured it out himself and came up with a very similar program. He calls it Diamond Dallas Page Yoga, DDPY for short. I'm not gonna talk as long about this because I'm just not that familiar. I only learned about this recently, but it's very much the same thing. So if you look at kind of the, the difference between yoga and DDPY, he doesn't like to call it yoga because it's much more comprehensive than yoga. Um, Yoga is really mainly about stretching and uh, it'll definitely build core strength for sure. It's about stretching and a lot of people are intimidated by it because <clears throat> there's some really advanced moves that look really difficult to do. And if you've ever tried to keep up with someone doing yoga when they're doing the real moves, it's like, it's kind of disheartening, man. 
Now, I'm sure there are modifications, but I don't know, man. I don't hear that much about him. So that's kind of his main point with what he does is that he takes people who, uh, man, if you want to see a heck of a um, recovery story, if you do that search for DDP yoga or DDPY or Diamond Dallas Page yoga, you'll probably see the recovery story of this guy who was a vet who was just really torn up <clears throat> from jumping out of planes and stuff. His knees were shot. He was walking on arm braces and getting around in a wheelchair. And he totally turned things around with this program. It's a just crazy recovery story. So you'll probably see that as well. But that's what he does. You can go from like, <clears throat> you can go from not even being able to walk to this guy runs now. Um, so when you look at any class he's doing, you'll see people all the way from people who can barely stand to people who are like doing what Diamond, Diamond Dallas Page himself does, which is like a full band, like putting his heels behind his head, that kind of stuff. So he was really careful to develop it for everybody. And the other thing is it incorporates strength a lot more. There's going to be like dynamic strength movements and uh, calisthenics and stuff all incorporated into it. So it's not just stretching, but it's stretching and building strength and also uh, just, I don't know, just dynamic movement really. <clears throat> 13 minutes is what it's going to be here. <coughs> that wasn't bad. Hello. How you doing? So that's another one that, now in the case of DDPY, you may uh, find more free res resources online. Now I know Diamond Dallas himself has invested millions in building this program. I just heard him on Joe Rogan. The podcast is from a while back, but he was on Joe Rogan talking about all the resources that are now available to people. It sounds like he's got an app that's really cutting edge and uh, all kinds of resources. Now, of course, a lot of this stuff is going to cost money. He's got to recuperate the millions he put into it. But... I mean, there are just, there's a ton of people into this, as you can imagine. I mean, Diamond Dallas Page, to his awesome credit, took something that was considered taboo for a lot of guys, just guys in general, but especially tough guys. Like if you're someone who lifts a lot of weights and, or you're someone who's in an impact sport and you're really abusing your body, who needs yoga more than those people? But at the same time, who would never do yoga less than those people. It's like the people who need it the most are the most, are most the type of guy who are like, I would never do that crap. That's for girls. They're the ones who need it most, man. So he like, I don't know. I think it's really great what he did. He made it available to those people, accessible to everybody, not just men and women and people who are mobility impaired. He made it accessible to everybody. So awesome kudos to Diamond Dallas Page. I think he's an awesome guy. I could go on and on about the other great humanitarian things he's doing to help other people and other wrestlers, but uh, we'll leave it at that. And say, uh, check out DDPY. Uh, that's Diamond Dallas Page Yoga. And I'm sure there's a ton of free resources. You can probably find a ton of videos online of how to do this. Again, I recommend, if you guys can afford it, go straight to the source or else you're gonna just see some guy like me who's like, this is how you do the moves. And you don't know if those are like, authentically how to do the moves. I mean, if that's all you have access to, it may be better than nothing, but just make sure whoever you're listening to is legit and is giving you good advice about how to do exercises properly. Um, we'll go on to, one of my very favorite fitness people on YouTube, Scooby1961. 
Scooby is, what can I say about Scooby, man? I love Scooby. He's freaking awesome. Uh, the dude's like 57. He's jacked. The guy's huge. This is what you look like if you start lifting weights when you're like 17 or 18 years old and don't skip workouts and you keep going for 40 years. This is the kind of physique you can get. He's all natural. Um, he doesn't, this dude does it legit. To my knowledge, he doesn't even drink or have any bad habits like that. He consumes maybe a lot more dairy than I think people should, but that's his business. I mean, it's hard for me to argue with the guy's results. So, what Scooby does that I think is so great is here's this guy who's obviously uh, huge, right? He's obviously put in just countless hours lifting weights and stuff. And the cool thing that he does is, well, first of all, he's had, for gosh, probably, he's probably had his website, which you can find through his YouTube page. Just look up Scooby1961. And, uh, I'm sure you can access his uh, his fitness page, his uh, website from there. Uh, this website is like just a huge, awesome free resource for people who, especially people, uh, he's got a lot of stuff specific to people over 40 who want to build muscle. And he, uh, what I like about him is you see someone like him and you think, they're just gonna be a muscle head and basically just talk about lifting weights. No, 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 no. What Scooby says is cardio is king. Cardio is number one. If you're gonna do one thing, do cardio. And you'll see this huge guy out there on his little road bike going out there climbing these huge hills. He's got videos on his channel. He'll go do a like a podcast style video while he's climbing some big hill. He lives out in California. The guy's just a phenomenal guy. I mean, he was an engineer. He's been retired a very long time. And uh, I think he was just smart with his money. And he, uh, he built his own airplane. <laughs> He's done just a lot of cool things. He built his own house. Um, just a really cool guy. Uh, but he talks a lot about cardio, about keeping things balanced. He talks a lot about nutrition. He's kind of a, almost a vegetarian. I think he says he eats, uh, I wanna say he says he eats fish sometimes, but he doesn't keep any animal stuff in the house. Um, except dairy. So anyway, that's Scooby. He's got just a wealth of free information out there. He's got a nutrition planner, if I'm not mistaken. It's at least, it's free to use, or at least there's like a free trial period. It might be totally free, but he's built this meal planner that's like supposed to be really phenomenal. I've just barely looked at it. Um, but he's got really comprehensive information, well-rounded. That's what I love about Scooby is he isn't just all about, uh, he's not just all about one aspect. It's a holistic approach to strength. Um, the other thing about him is he travels a lot. So he's got like a lot of videos about how to do things on the go, how to do like modified body weight exercises and how to do things when you don't have access to a gym or access to heavy weights. He shows how to lift weights with just very light weights and get great results. He's got a lot of cool information like that. We're going to come back to him in a minute after the next thing I talk about, but just real quick, if this is as far as you get, Scooby1961, look him up on YouTube. Uh, I can't remember the name of his website, but you'll be able to access it there. Great guy. And then the uh, last thing I've been doing, so Scooby1961, what I incorporate in my workout from him is his... Uh, he calls it the rotisserie workout. It's a core workout that's the best I've seen. It got a little noisy out there. So Scooby, that's two days a week that I do the uh, rotisserie workout. We'll get into kind of the full breakdown of the workout here at the end of the video. The next program that I've been incorporating is convict conditioning. It's a calisthenics workout. It's supposedly based on the guy who wrote it was in prison, developed this workout with just his own body weight because he didn't have access to uh, fancy gym equipment and stuff like that and it's really cool a lot of people are into it basically it divides the workouts into six groups there's six types of exercise there's push-ups pull-ups squats leg raises and then the two more advanced exercises you don't get it into these two until later in the program but there's bridges and handstand push-ups so you start with the four 
the four big ones, push-ups, pull-ups, squats, and leg raises, and then you progress through 10 stages within each exercise. And then even with those last two, with bridges and handstand push-ups, there's 10 stages to those as well. And then you're at like the expert level. Now to get to that upper echelon, that's like, I mean, really, really advanced stuff. One arm push-ups, one arm pull-ups, one arm handstand push-ups, uh, full bridges. It's pretty wild. Uh, so even for me as a beginner to get to where I'm incorporating those last two movements, I've got a clear like stage six on the first four movements, which could take a year or longer. I don't know. Um, some people say, I will tell you some of the criticisms of convict conditioning. Some say it creates mus muscle imbalances. I don't see how that's really a thing. It seems well-rounded to me. They may say that because there's a lot of push-ups, but you're also doing back exercises as well. And he's very careful about getting into the push-ups. You start at a very, very easy level. You start with wall push-ups, and he says everybody's got to start at the bottom. So even if you're quite advanced, you start with the easier movements, and then you'll quickly progress to the more advanced ones. Uh, so I really like it. It's an ebook you can buy. I think it's like 12 or 15 or 18 dollars, something like that. Um, now, if you don't want to buy this ebook, again, the name's Convict Conditioning. You can simply go back to Scooby 1961, and he's got some workouts to prepare people for basic training and stuff like that, where he goes through stages of uh, calisthenic workouts. So he does things with push ups, pull ups, stuff like that. Probably his most popular video that's had millions and millions and millions of views is how to do eight pull ups and then eight more. Um, and he's got the same thing for doing all the exercise components of basic training to prepare people. Now, I don't really recommend people get into the sit-up part of it. I really recommend his rotisserie workout, but he does have a thing for progressive sit-ups because that's part of basic training. So if you don't want to pay the money for convict conditioning, Scooby has some free resources on his channel where you can uh, you know, do something kind of similar and watch his free videos about that. So what I do for my workout every day, I have Sundays off, but even on Sundays, every single day, I do my stretch routine. And that's the same stretch routine you've seen me do for years. If you think way back, I don't think the video is active right now. It might be, but there's a how to do yoga in a van video where I show how to do these stretches in bed without even standing up. You know, just in a van where all you can do is sit up in bed, you can do my uh, basic stretch routine. It's not mine, but uh, I do it, and I've done it for years. And there have been some little times when I didn't do it, but for several years now, most of most days, most of the time within that, every single day I do this. So even on Sunday, I do the stretches. Even on Sunday, I do a, just a few minutes of foundation training. I do that every single day, and the stretches every single day. And then my active workout days, Monday through Saturday, what I do is I go for a jog. Now, there could be a light, slow jog that's very long. That would be like keeping my heart rate at a low level and doing a longer uh, time of exercise. Then there could be a medium heart rate level for medium time, which was kind of what I did today. And then there can be a little faster where I do it for time and try to get it a little higher. Then there could even be sprints where I'm just running all out, but for very short bursts. So I think it's important to mix up all the different types. Of course, you don't want to start right off getting into sprints. I've just kind of started to build back up to the level where I'm going to incorporate that again. So within Monday through Saturday, I mix it up. I have some days where I might do sprints and some days where I do the lower stuff. Really sprints, I'm probably only going to do once a week and then mix up the other days. So what I'll do, I get up. I don't eat breakfast. Haven't done that for a while. I'll maybe have some coffee if I want it. And then I'll go on a jog. Then I come back here. Then I do my main workout. And then I go eat lunch immediately after. And then a little while after that, I'll have my dinner. And then that's it for the day. So generally, I'll finish my main workout about 11.30. Then the restaurant down the hill will be open at 11.30. Go down there and eat. And then finish wrapping up eating 12.30ish. And then I'll eat my dinner about six, and that's it. Um, so for this main workout, what I do is my calisthenics. I go, uh, like I said, I go jog, come back, and then I'm going to 
sometimes I'll do my little stretch routine before it, but sometimes I'll wait on the stretch routine till the evening. But I always do the foundation training as a warm up and then the calisthenics. So that's it. Um, and then on some days, two to the days per week, it's the core routine instead of the calisthenics. So those four workouts, the push-ups, pull-ups, squats, and leg raises, and then two core routines, those are my six days. I just do one exercise per day. So Monday, it's push-ups. Tuesday, it's leg raises. Wednesday, it's my uh, rotisserie routine. Thursday, it's pull-ups. Friday, it's squats. Saturday, it's core routine again, the rotisserie. And then Sunday is off. All I do on Sunday is the stretches and foundation. And all those other days, I'm going on my jog, then foundation training, then the calisthenics or rotisserie routine. And then at some point in the day, the stretching. That's all I do. So I spend about, the jog could be anywhere. If I'm doing sprints, it could be like eight or 10 minutes and that's it. Or if I'm doing a very long one where I do a few loops or a couple loops very slowly, it could be 20-something, 30-something minutes. And then most days it's just going to be 10 to 15 minutes of jogging, followed by doing the foundation training and calisthenics is going to take about 15 minutes. So really a half hour is it. And then I'll do at some point the stretches. Usually I tend to do those in the evening, but sometimes I'll do them before all this other stuff. And that's it. That's what I do every day. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope it was helpful. Again, to see how to really do these exercises, go straight to the source. Go straight to the people who develop the exercises. Go see what the experts have to say about it. You know, pay them some money for these programs they develop. They deserve it. Thanks for watching. Please thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please ring the bell if you want to see when I upload more content. And I'll see you next time, YouTube.